So this is one of those questions we get asked a lot. Are Krieger's bags really worth the money? It's a fair enough question to ask, after all, as they're definitely not cheap. They range in price from £115 for their R15 up to £199 for the R30, so people want to know they're going to deliver the goods. The short answer, as far as I'm concerned, is yes, Krieger's bags are very much worth the money. But I guess you'd probably expect me to say that as someone who works for a Krieger dealer. But that's only the short answer. The long answer involves whether they're worth the money to you. So let me explain a little bit more about what you get when you buy a Krieger bag. First of all, there are some key features that set Krieger bags apart from the norm. Most of them are positives for pretty much everybody, but in some cases these put people off. The most striking difference about a Krieger is their quad lock harness, which is what eases the pressure on your shoulders and back and makes sure they don't get such a hard time while you're riding. If you've not seen one before, you put your arms through the straps and then this chest brace connects across the front of your sternum. The bigger bags have two clips on this brace and the smaller ones like this R20 have one clip across here instead. They're both adjustable for height as well, which dictates how high the bag sits on your back. On the smaller bags like this R20, there's an additional belt. But some people don't like that and it's easy to take it off the bag completely if you like that. With these smaller bags, you don't really need that support anyway, unless you're riding off road and you want to stop the bag jiggling about on your back. Quad lock braces are really popular with most riders as the weight is spread across your upper body and supported much better than it is on a normal rucksack where you just get shoulder straps. That's especially noticeable if you tend to carry quite a bit of weight in your bag, but not everyone likes quad lock. Having this on your chest can make it a bit harder to look down when you're wearing a full face helmet for something like fueling up. It's also not so easy to carry a Krieger bag on one shoulder as they're designed to be clipped together and some people don't like that either. Krieger use high quality, tough materials in their bags. They're designed to last. They're made using a heavy duty Cordura type material and also lots of ripstop, which is this material with a crisscross thread pattern through it to stop tears getting out of hand. The clasps are all reassuringly solid, the zip pullers are strong enough to last for years and the straps themselves seem to be fray proof in my experience. So everything about that's all good then. Well, it is if you want something that will seemingly go on forever, but it's not if you want something lightweight. If you read through the customer reviews on Sports Bike Shop for Krieger bags, the fact they're heavier than a normal rucksack is something that does attract a bit of criticism. So it depends what's important to you. If it's lightweight, then make sure you get a feel of one of these bags before you buy one. If it's longevity you want, then you've absolutely got it right here. Roll top closures are in no way unique to Krieger, but their waterproof rucksacks all rely on the roll top to keep rain out. The idea is that you load the waterproof compartment, you roll the top over and then clip it shut. You'll get three clips with Krieger usually, one on each side and then one on top. Other rucksacks with a similar method often use just two. Once it's rolled over, rain can't get in the top and soak your stuff. So is there a downside to this? A small one is that it takes a bit longer to load a bag up when it's got that compartment, which can be a bit annoying at times. And it also means you've got a narrower opening, which makes it harder to get stuff, especially stuff that's at the bottom of the bag. So really, again, it depends what sort of mentality you have. If you've got the patience of a monk, then you'll be absolutely fine. But if everything has to happen now, and sometimes even that's too late, then you might find yourself getting a bit hot under the collar. The bag itself doesn't have to be the end of it with Krieger. You get loops on the shoulder straps with most of their bags, which means you can clip small additional packs on there to give you easy access to your bits and bobs. Loops on the main section of some bags also mean you can attach a Krieger dry pack on there and give yourself even more storage room if you need it. If you don't want to keep stopping for water on your trips, you can even put a Hydra pack inside most of their bags and then a tube feeds through from the inside of the bag to sit on your straps. And then after that, you've constantly got water on tap. And there's also the ability to buy replacement parts for these things like waterproof liners so you can keep a Krieger bag going for longer than you can with others. I've never seen anyone criticise Krieger for offering this sort of flexibility. It's not as if you need any of this stuff to make the bag work, it just gives you a bit of extra if you want it. Krieger bags like these have a 10 year warranty. Now, not all warranties are made equal. Some companies are very forthcoming when an item's developed a fault and others it has to be said are less so. My gauge for this is to mention the name of a company to Joe and Tracy who both look after these issues for our customers and see how they respond. Sometimes it's a grimace and sometimes it's a smile. When I mentioned Krieger to Joe and Tracy, they both smiled. So the reasons behind that. Firstly, we don't get many Krieger bags back. In 2021, of the many thousands of their items we'd sold that were still covered by warranty, just 0.14% came back under warranty. That's a rate of 14 in every 10,000 items. 
and Krieger are also good at dealing with warranty claims. Every single claim in 2021 was dealt with by Krieger, either by repairing or replacing the item. And they usually sorted it within a few days as well, not making customers wait for weeks while they deliberated over deciding whether to cover it. In that sense, that's an emphatic yes as to whether Krieger's bags are worth the outlay. I said something in one of our reviews of a Krieger bag about people who've bought one pretty much always being happy with it. It seemed from reading the customer reviews that everyone took a sharp intake of breath when they found out the price of a Krieger bag, but after a spell of owning one, they became really glad they'd splashed out. So I thought I'd try and put some research into that rather than just going off of my own hunch. First of all, we did a poll on our social media accounts and we asked this question. If you've bought a Krieger bag, was it worth the money? A total of 273 people answered and 85% of them said they thought the bag was value for money. Now that's good, but I have to admit it's actually a little bit lower than I thought it would be. I then had a proper thorough scour through the customer reviews left on Sports Bike Shop. We've had 294 reviews across nine different models of rucksack and 89% of those reviewers gave the maximum five stars. Then 10% gave four stars and the last 1% gave three stars. Now looking through those reviews and the social media comments, I tried to find things that people didn't like about Krieger and that brought out a few different bits and bobs. Of the people who said their bag wasn't value for money and explained why, most surrounded it being heavy the owner not liking the way it fitted across the chest or it not being waterproof. Now that last bit is interesting and it's not people criticizing the waterproofing performance of Krieger bags that are meant to be waterproof like this one. It's people criticizing the bags that are not meant to be waterproof like this one. I think it's possibly not always crystal clear which of their bags are meant to be waterproof and which bits of those bags are also meant to be waterproof. The rule of thumb is this, if there's a roll top closure, it's waterproof. If there isn't, it's not waterproof. And if there is a roll top closure, the bit that you roll up the top of, that's the only bit that's waterproof. The rest of the bag isn't. Part of the confusion is that non-waterproof Kriegers like this one are still relatively good at keeping out water. In my experience, it has to rain pretty damn hard for a long time to soak through the materials. And they also fit things like sealed zips and people end up looking and thinking, yeah, that's a waterproof bag. They go out on the road, they get a full sense of security, they think it's waterproof and then one day it rains really hard and they discover that it's not waterproof and it was never meant to be waterproof. Overall, I thought the customer satisfaction maybe wasn't quite as high as I'd anticipated, but I hope I've explained what the complaints were. And on the whole, there's still an overwhelming number of buyers who've expressed complete satisfaction with what they bought. And considering people who've spent a lot of money tend to be understandably a bit more particular, and generally they also feel more justified in criticizing something, then I think the figures for satisfaction are actually pretty damned impressive. And there's something else that comes through in the comments that's also quite interesting. If you buy a Krieger bag and you're in that small minority of people who don't like it, owners say used Krieger bags still fetch pretty decent money if you sell them on eBay. This is a Krieger R30 that I've owned since 2010 and I couldn't with any conscience tell you I've looked after it and it's absolutely filthy. In the last 12 years, I'd be surprised if this bag's covered less than 80,000 miles. It had daily use for the first six or seven years of its life, and it's still been well used since then. And it's never been cleaned, unless you count a rain shower as cleaning. It looks a bit dog-eared in places, but it still works exactly as it should. Padding in the straps and against the back is still plump. The clips on the quad lock harness clip together as well as they ever did. And the metal on the sliders here hasn't even tarnished over the years. The zips on the outer pockets work just fine and the pullers are all still intact. The outer material is fine, there's no threads or tears and there's barely even a mark on the tough base. There are a few trivial bits that haven't particularly stood up to the test of time and miles. The elastic restraints for the quad lock straps just here have stopped elasticating and the covering on the top handle started coming away thanks to flapping about in the wind for all those miles. That handle still works perfectly well even with that cover flapping away. The last bit that's now a bit shabby is the waterproof liner on the inside. And this is one of the beauties of this design. It's replicated on other Krieger roll top rucksacks and it's removable. You just undo the Velcro, pull it out and stick a new one in. But today's price is at £17.50 for a new liner to bring back those waterproofing properties so they're as good as new. Now, this liner is actually the third I've had in 12 years. The first one wore out and started leaking. I ruined the second one when I spilt something acidic inside the bag and now I'm on this one. Now, I hadn't studied my bag too closely until we started this video, and I've never really noticed any of these worn bits. The bag's just carried on regardless, and it still functions exactly as it should. But this has shown me that I should really give it a clean, and I reckon a bit of attention will get this looking a lot better again. Once I've done that, I'll get it back into the studio, and then I'll show you how it's come up. In the meantime, though, I hope that shows how long a Krieger bag can last and still be up to the job. 
I don't have many bits of bike kit left from 2010 that still work properly, but this one's ready to go. And I reckon it'll do another 12 years if I want it to. Okay, so we're right back to the beginning, I guess, with me saying a Krieger bag is worth the money, if the circumstances are right for you. If you've got an old shoulder or neck injury like I have, then a Krieger bag can make a huge difference in terms of comfort when you're riding and also when you finish at the end of the day. I've been testing some more traditional rucksacks recently and I could tell there's been extra strain on my shoulders compared to wearing this old Krieger all the time. My left shoulder, left arm and my neck have all been niggling me recently much more than they did when I was wearing this bag all the time. For me, that alone is worth the extra outlay on this Krieger bag. But take that issue out of it and for me it comes down to the difference between price and value. Something that's low in price isn't always better value than something that costs a lot more money. Plenty of people in the customer reviews for Krieger bags have worked out how much that bag is costing them over 10 years, the lifetime of the warranty. So taking the most expensive Krieger bag as we record this, an R30, it costs £20 a year if it lasts for that 10 year warranty period. So if you're spending £20 a year on cheap rucksacks that are only going to last a year, then in 10 years time you'll have spent just as much money. You'll also have suffered 10 years of carting around rubbish rucksacks and you'll have chucked 10 of the damn things into landfill as well and you'll still have to find 20 quid at the end of it for another cheap rucksack to take on from that point. If you go for Krieger, you'll have bought one bag, the chances are it'll still be going strong in 10 years time, so you'll be in profit in years 11, 12, and from then on. But it comes down to how many rucksacks you're going through each year, which in turn comes down to how much you're using one. So if you don't ride much, or you don't wear rucksacks much, and you've got no physical grumbles like me that make a basic rucksack a bit of a pain to use, then you don't need to shell out for a Krieger bag. But if you do use one quite a bit and you want something that's gonna last you for a good while, then a Krieger bag is definitely worth the money. Well, that's my opinion anyway. I hope this helps you make a decision on whether it's worth forking out for a Krieger, but if it hasn't, and you've got anything you'd like to ask or something you'd like to add from your own experience of Krieger, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching. Right, I said earlier that I had a plan to go away and finally clean up this bag after 12 years of use. I've done that. What I did was basically dunked it in warm water that was soaked through with an S100 cleaning substance that you use for cleaning bike kit. Gave it a good scrub with a nylon bristle brush all over, rinsed it out, hung it out to dry, and this is the result. I think it's actually come up pretty good. It's nice and clean, way cleaner than it was before. It smells a lot better. Not that I've ever really went around sniffing my rucksack very often but I think it's come up pretty fresh. I've also kind of trimmed away the flappy, horrible bits that were on top here on this carry handle, trimmed it down, made it neater, super glued that back on, giving it a bit of a refresh all round. It's probably not up there with restoring a classic motorbike, bringing back a classic bag, but I think having degrubbed it, I've shown that the condition of this at the end after 12 years and probably 80, 90,000 miles is still really impressive and I think that shows that maybe there is a lot to be said for spending that extra money on going for a Krieger bag, judging by the condition of this after all this time.